speed up the sun video here a hundred times so that or is it ten times and <clears throat> so you can see the pulsing of, of the uh, fake sun and um, what I believe this to be is the sun simulator and this is coming from the International Space Station one of six and it just doesn't uh, always maintain a perfect spherical shape and um, and so you know since it's not a real sun it's uh, subject to to uh, you know some uh, man-made implications so I'm gonna show you a clip from Jeff P who explains a little bit on the Sun simulator and I encourage you to uh, check out everything he's got he's got a lot of really good information and uh, so, check this out. Okay, and this uh, this is something by Jeff P. that uh, explains the artificial sun, which seems to corroborate the flashing and everything that we're seeing on this on these sun photographs that I put out. And um, my understanding is we actually have about six international space stations, and so they could have these light sources on all of those stations and can be used for a number of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. I'll put uh, Jeff P's link in the description. So I have a theory about <clears throat> all this in that, um, you know, why would they need a fake sun? Why, why do they need an artificial sun? And my feeling is that we have an incoming brown dwarf and that our sun is being, is being drained by it. And um, we may even experience uh, like an ice age if we didn't have this artificial sun. So um, is the artificial sun doing good or bad? Well, maybe a little bit of both. but. Um, if you think about it, um, it makes sense that our sun could be drained and the net result would, would certainly be a much cooler planet. So that's just the theory I came up with today and I'm going with it for now. January 14, 2017. Here we are at, oh, Tagiak, looking to the east. It's 10.13 in the morning and draw your attention right here. And I'm sure you saw that, but I'll just go back a little bit. So this one's a little faint, but you can clearly see the object here. And then as we progress, there's something else over here. It's almost like you can see it casting a light or something. Oh, I don't know. 
and then it moves. Very interesting. This is Perryville looking to the southeast, Saturday, January 14th at 10 a.m. And I just found that this object here was quite, <clears throat> well, it doesn't look uh, to be a natural formation in my opinion. So I uh, thought it was worth taking a look at. So I want to enhance it a little bit. This is what we got. You know, has such uh, straight lines. It really looks more like some type of craft, to be honest with you. Yeah, just uh, it's got some of that signature uh, energy that we see coming off of some of these anomalous objects flying around. This is Old Harbor looking to the southwest at 11.56 a.m. And I want to draw your attention here to right here, sorry. I can only speculate that this is some type of a obscuring uh, device. It's probably designed to change the color of the sky in this area so that this all blends together, would be my guess. Well, we have more strangeness in the skies. And what caught my attention was up here, which looked like a could potentially be an orb. So I decided to go ahead and do what I do, and and then I see the smaller object here with the with the hole in it that we see so often, which I now believe is um, essentially a Dyson sphere, and. I can show you what that is. It's, it's at the Vatican, it's at the uh, United Nations, it's at Ground Zero at 9-11. It's all over the place. And uh, I now believe Nibiru to be a spacecraft. And um, I'm not saying this is it, but it has a similar look to it. Um, apparently, though, it's quite huge. And which, you know, it makes sense that uh, the Navy ad that showed a big red planet, the Navy um, commercial, and um, well, uh, you know, that object looks very man-made or certainly not natural looking, and uh, so here's further evidence of similar looking objects. I blew it up a little bit more. Weird. It looks like a face behind there, too. Uh, and then, um, it's funny how I, I was just looking at this, and I almost missed this completely. And there are some other weird things up here, too. But 
so I blew that object up. And there you have it. This object looks to have some type of a, like a band around it. Port Lions looking to the southeast, and I just want to draw your attention to this object here. Uh, this this is becoming the very classic looking spacecraft, if you will, uh, that we're seeing. And uh, there's just so many of these objects with with a hole in it. And if you go to the Vatican, you will see this object. And it shows it's mechanical on the inside, indicating that it is, in fact, a artifact made by man or something other than a natural occurrence. you got to use that term man loosely these days, knowing what I now know. And um, apparently there's one of these at the, uh, at the Ground Zero in New York at the United Nations. And... Personally, I didn't know anything about that, but um, as I get closer to the truth, the things I continue to learn are amazing. All right, up here at Point Hope, looking to the north, trying to find some anomaly in the sky. Ooh, what's that? Hmm. Guess I better take a closer look at it. Well, that's peculiar. Not quite as peculiar as uh, the object that I found last night that I called an eagle, which I no longer think of an eagle. Well, I don't know. Object of interest. Right, up here at Point Hope, looking to the north, trying to find some anomaly in the sky. Ooh, what's that? Hmm. Guess I better take a closer look at it. Well, that's peculiar. Not quite as peculiar as uh, the object that I found last night that I called an eagle, which I no longer think of an eagle. Well, I don't know. Object of interest. Hello everybody, it is January 11th at 7.15 a.m. in Alaska, and we are looking to the northwest, yes, the northwest, and we have this object setting at 7.45 a.m. What's up with that?
725, 7.45, 7.55 a.m. Now this corroborates what I found at another airport, which I'll show you next. And same day, January 11th. This is looking to the northwest at Yukon River Bridge, 7.19 a.m. The next frame was cut out. So this is obviously a another light source. Should I call it a sun? I think I can. This would be a binary star different than the different than the um, brown dwarf so does this make us in a trinary or is this part of the dual binary that I've been talking about well this is evidence of three right here <clears throat> so we'll see Yeah, so what I've done is to uh, speed up the sun video here a hundred times so that, or ten times, and <clears throat> so you can see the pulsing of, of the uh, fake sun. And um, what I believe this to be is the sun simulator, and this is coming from the International Space Station, one of six, and it just doesn't uh, always maintain a perfect spherical shape and um, and so you know since it's not a real sun it's uh, subject to to uh, you know some uh, man-made implications so I'm gonna show you a clip from Jeff P who explained a little bit on the Sun simulator and I encourage you to uh, check out everything he's got. He's got a lot of really good information. And uh, so, check this out. Okay, and this uh, this is something by Jeff P. that uh, explains the artificial sun, which seems to corroborate the flashing and everything that we're seeing on this on these sun photographs that I put out. And um, my understanding is we actually have about six international space stations and so they could have these light sources on all of those stations and can be used for a number of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. I'll put uh, Jeff P's link in the description.